Welcome to a tutorial on Photo View and Google Fonts. This is going to be a bit of a plugin spotlight and I'll show you how I use those two plugins to make this little example app here that looks an awful lot like Instagram and has the uh, photo view here where you can go to a full screen. And then it's a bit awkward with the emulator, but you can pinch to zoom. There we go. And then pan around with your photos. So in order to do that on an emulator, you got to hold down control. And then it's got the hero animation to return back to the um, where it was in the list. So yeah, let's get into it. So here's the lesson plan here. So we're going to go over the plugins used, uh, look at their um, pub page on the website there, uh, then do some setup for what we need to do to be able to use them. There's almost no setup, but we do need to do one thing in the Android manifest. Uh, then we're going to look at the home screen, which is this screen, and the app bar and how I use the Google fonts there. And then the post component, which is in the list view here and then the post screen, which is really just the photo view plugin. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's go into the plugins used. So here is the photo view. Uh, photo view is an incredible plugin. It's so easy to use and it gives you this um, gesture detection that's really, would be really, really hard to make. Pinch, rotate, and drag images. Uh, but it's not just images, it can actually show any widget. So if you have some other thing like a table or something like that, and you want your user to be able to pinch to zoom and scroll around if it doesn't fit very well on a screen, uh, well then you can do that, including text as well. Um, so it's awesome plugin because all you got to do, very basic us usage, is just use this component that they made and then you got to give it an image provider. And an image provider is a little bit different than an actual image wi widget. Uh, I'll show you how to do that, it's not very hard. And here's the result, you get this pinch to zoom type uh, deal. And it also has like a photo gallery. I'm not going to go over the photo gallery but it's a, it's a pretty cool component. You can. Uh, read more if you'd like. And then here's the Google Fonts. Google Fonts is by far the easiest way to add new fonts to your Flutter app. There's 977 of them and variants. And the only catch is that you need internet uh, to be able to display them. So that's really the only disadvantage is that it needs to look up the font online. Uh, if they're baked into your app, you know, if you actually have the file that defines all the fonts, then that might be better if your app might be seeing a lot of offline usage. Um, but all you got to do as they show you here, it's just give it a text style and they got a whole bunch of factory constructors and static stuff to play around with to change your fonts. And you can see they hot reload the different fonts there. So that's how I made the app bar have italics up there. Uh, and if you're looking for all of the fonts, they're all on the fonts.google website and you can search up what kind of thing that you would like. So I made a search for handwriting to find that Instagram type thing and then just picked one of these. Okay, so now let's get into the setup. So all we got to do for setup is in Android only is allow internet. And this is a bit silly that you even still need to do this because what app doesn't use internet? But basically you just open up your Android manifest, which lives in Android app, SRC, main, and then the file. And then you just got to add this line here and it's uses permission uh, with the internet there. Uh, this is a bit weird because if you don't do this in debug mode on the emulator, it'll work fine. And then when you go flutter run release, and this is release mode, so it's a little snappier, uh, you won't have internet and none of the images will display. So all of these images are network images um, that I've ripped off of the internet. And they don't load when you're offline, obviously, but they also don't load if you forget this. So just add that in there. That's all you really got to do. And then in this, uh, uh, the other setup, obviously, you just got to put your dependencies into your pubspec.yaml, click on pub get there, and then you got your plugins. Uh, the other setup I'm going to show you is a view model. So this is the data that a post has. So it has a whole bunch of URLs for the different network images and numbers of comments and stuff like that. And I've just hard coded it for this example, but um, you could imagine if this was a real app, you know, all of these different things might be coming from different uh, storage buckets or stuff like that to display these images. So I've just got um, the username here, the post content, uh, which is the text, the profile image URL, which is this image, uh, post image URL, which is the main post. First liked by is this guy's name. First liked by profile image URL, so this tiny little image here. A list of string of usernames who have liked it. And then a list of string for comments. And then there's just a couple little helpers here. Uh, the preview, so I've capped it at 110 characters. If it's less than that, then it'll just return it, but trim off all of the new lines in the white space. And if not, then it'll cut it off so you get the dot, dot, dot there. And then this little uh, helper here to generate the liked by, liked by this guy and however many others. And similar one for the comments, view and comments there. 
then the constructor, and then I just hard coded a bunch of your um, stuff and found some images on Instagram actually to make it look like Instagram. So it's just some factory constructors for the two examples there. All hard coded, obviously just an example of UI. It's not a functioning app. These buttons don't do anything yet. Uh, but yeah, that's our setup for, uh, so I can show you how the UI is actually gonna work. So now let's take a look at the home screen. And first, I guess, actually main for the app theme. So the app theme, I have started with themedata.dark as a starting point. And it is uh, very close to what I already want, except I want the app bar theme to be black and the scaffold to be black. Uh, on Instagram, when you have dark mode, the app bar and the background are all identical colors, uh, which is just pretty much hard black. And then I changed my divider color here, so it's just this subtle kind of gray. Um, and that's all I needed to adjust. So let's go into the home screen now. So the home screen has some hard-coded um, data. You know, obviously this would need to come from a server if it was a real app, uh, but it's just static final up here. And then we got our app bar here. So the app bar has this instant gram knockoff here, and all you gotta do to use your Google fonts is just go Google fonts dot whatever font you want. And then inside that you have a whole bunch of things that you can add in just like a textile. You can put an actual textile, the color, the background color, font size, all this sort of stuff. Um, very, very easy to use, especially if you don't actually need anything super fine tuning. Like you just put, oh, I want some sort of italics font and then it, it's done. You don't need to do anything with adding font assets, which is kind of annoying. Um, so yeah, really easy to use. Just throw it into the textile of a text there. Then I got a whole bunch of uh, buttons and widgets that don't actually do anything, but we got the fo add photo button, the favor button, and the chat button right here in the app bar. And then the body is a list view dot builder. Uh, so when you're working with expensive widgets or really any sort of list that could be kind of long, it's very important to use the dot builder constructor of a list view because this creates the widgets lazily. Uh, what that means is that if I have a hundred images here and I use list view dot builder, it's only going to be trying to build the ones that are actually going to be on the screen. Uh, if you don't do that, you can get some serious lag in your UI from having a hundred images actually in a column and it's trying to render all of them when it's not really rendering them, they're not actually on the screen. Um, but yeah, to use that listview.builder, we just got to pass in the item count so that we don't overflow our array. And then my post component just needs the post view model, so I just pass it post view models I there. Um, you can put padding internally into the list view. This is a really handy tip. So if you want your list view to scroll such that there's a bit of bottom padding so that something like a sheet or a floating action button is completely cleared so that it's not covering half of the last post, you can just put some bottom padding on here and that will be built into the list view for you. So you don't need to wrap your list view with padding. And the reason that you don't want to wrap the list view with padding is because see how flush it actually lines up here if we put padding on the list view itself, we're gonna have an empty space here of like black, and that's not what we want. We want it to be perfectly flush, but we want the padding to be like kind of on the edge of the actual content within the list view. Okay, so now we have this bottom sheet. It's just a uh, container with a row in it to align it. So this is the kind of bottom bar. And again, none of these buttons actually do anything. Uh, they are just the icons there to show you just how the styling might work. Um, so we got a container with a box decoration and this is not a divider, this is actually just a border. So to put a border on a container, all you gotta do is pass it that box decoration, give it a border, and if you only want certain sides of it to have a border, you can just use the border constructor and pass it in whichever sides that you actually want. So I just want the top and I want it to be that same, uh, well, similar divider color, it's not exactly the same, but this one's, yeah, just a shade of gray with a width there. So it's a hard-coded height of 50, and then we got these buttons here spaced evenly. Okay, so that wraps, about, wraps up the home screen. So next, let's look at the post component. So that's one of these elements in the list. That's right here. So the post takes in a post view model. This is the data package. Uh, when you use this kind of um, data package, like a view model, it makes it so that your constructors are really, really small and that this data, uh, you know, your view model can actually have a bit of logic in it, like string building, and that makes it really easy to unit test because then you can unit test the string building without actually needing a real UI. So I like putting that stuff in a view model and then ultimately this post is a, a column. So it's a column and it starts off with a divider. So notice the app bar actually doesn't have any sort of elevation or, or break. That actually comes from the top post with this divider here. Um, so that's the divider and then we have a 
uh, list tile here for the profile. So we got a circular network image. This is my component. I'll get to it in a second. Whoops. Okay, here we have that file circular network image. So this is a component that I made that it just encapsulates having to uh, show an image.network, but clip its um, corners, which is actually a bit awkward to do, unfortunately. Um, so it takes in a URL and a size. So this is like the radius. Um, actually, this is the diameter. This is like the actual size. And that lives in a series of widgets. Ultimately, it's image.network. So first we have a container and it uh, needs this alignment.center and it, it's restricting the available area, available area to that size. Then we put in a clip oval and a circle avatar. I like the circle avatar because it has a background color um, so that if it's loading, it'll look like an empty circle and then it'll pop in. So it makes it look like there's going to be an image there instead of just being completely transparent. This one actually works with the radius, so it's got to be size over two. And then I have a builder here. So I've set it up such that if the URL is null, it's a nullable, um, we're going to get this icon of the person's uh, gray. So I use this sometimes in um, other projects to display like a profile image before the user's loaded. This is like the empty state. But uh, we're always going to have a URL in this project. So we just put that URL into the image.network. We want to cover for uh, covering the available area and then put that height and width into the, put the size into both of those fields. So that's the profile image here and you can see the different size. So this is a default size of 40 and then this one's just a little bit smaller there. And that's the leading of a list tile and then we have the title is their name and then the trailing is an icon button with this more thing that Instagram has. So we have the image here. Uh, this is the wrapped within a gesture detector so that we can navigate to that other screen. So on tap, we're just going to push that other route and that post screen needs the URL of the image that we are tapping there. And its child has a hero and heroes are used for hero animation. Hero animation is like when you have something on one screen and it animates to its location on another screen. It's like that component just moves and the background changes, right? So uh, it's easiest to see when going back from this screen where it just shrinks back to where it was on the list view. And these are so easy to make. So let's say it's way up here, right? And then you go back, it just pops right back up into the top of the list. Uh, it just knows how to do it no matter where it is on the screen. It's really, really cool. And it can also scale it. So if it's a different size on the other screen, it's going to scale it for you as well. So all you need to do to make that work is have a hero on both screens with the same tag. It doesn't need to have the same child because it'll figure out how to animate it, but it does need to have this exact same tag and you can only have one hero with a certain tag uh, in your widget tree at a time or else it wouldn't know which hero is which to animate to. So we're just going to wrap that image.network. Uh, this is a Flutter component. This isn't from the, um, the uh, plugin there, uh, but it just says a post image URL. We've just decided that it's going to be 200 units tall, fill the entire width, and it's going to cover that box. So if you don't have a, a box fit cover here, if you get a weird shaped image, uh, it might not fit. Like if it's very, very wide, it might be like not as tall or if it's a vertical one, it would just have white space. So uh, it's nice to put that box fit cover so it actually covers the full area that you had intended to. Then I've put this uh, build button row here into a method just because it's a bit long. So it just builds this row with all of these icon buttons, which again, don't do anything. Uh, but this alignment here is worth talking about. So imagine you want this row of buttons. They're all aligned on this axis, but you want these three on the left and this one on the right. All you got to do is when you build your row, put a spacer in there, and then that's going to make basically an expanded section here such that this icon button is on the far right and these ones are on the left. So moving down here. So now we have another list tile and it's similar to the top one, except the image is a bit smaller. So this one also optionally takes in a size to make this image a little bit smaller. We got the title from um, our view model here, which is a liked by label, liked by this guy and 18 others. And this one I've made dense true because it's a, it's a little bit smaller font and size than this one. So that makes the title smaller and also decreases the padding a bit. Um, then we have the content preview. Um, so list tiles inherently have some padding on the left um, and I just, it's 16, so I just make the padding 16 to align this text with everything else. Um, different Flutter components sometimes have different amounts of side padding and making them align. Usually it's in units of eight. Uh, so this one has 16 and this one has eight. Um, so if you're ever like trying to 
get a text aligned with something that's built in from material like a list style, like the edge of something on the list style. Often it's units of eight. So similarly, we have this flat, um, sorry, text button, and it has padding of left eight to align it with everything else. And that has the label from our view model, and again, doesn't do anything. It's nothing's actually hooked up in this app. Um, so that's the post and the hero widget. So now let's look at the post screen. So when you click on this guy, you are routed to the post screen here. And in this is where we're actually gonna use that photo view plugin to view this photo and do things like pinch to zoom, pan around, and if it wasn't an emulator, you could also rotate it if you really felt like it. Um, so I put it in a scaffold just so that the background is a material, and all it needs is a URL, and that goes into an image provider. So image provider is a little bit different than an actual widget. So on the previous screen, we used image.network, which is a widget. Now we're gonna use network image, which is ultimately an image provider. So it's a little bit different there, uh, but all it needs is the URL. You can also change the scale if you wanted to like zoom in or whatever. Photo view has built in hero attributes so that you don't need to wrap it with anything with a hero widget. All you need to do is pass in this hero attributes with the tag. Um, this is great because it's just set up out of the box for these hero animations, which makes a lot of sense because often if you want an image to go full screen, you might as well animate that going out to full screen. It looks great. Uh, it also has something similar like the box fit where our initial scale is covered, right? So this happens to be kind of a vertical wide angle shot with the night sky and you know, uh, it's gonna cover the whole screen. So instead of entering the screen with it like this or something done, we kind of want to just enter it with it the full scale. So that's what that does is it covers the available area there for the initial view. Now there's quite a bit of other stuff in here. So let's just control click in here and read about a couple other things that I didn't use that you could. Um, so loading builder. So you're getting this image from the internet. If you want to display something while it's loading, you can pass in a builder function which returns a widget so that you can um, dis display some sort of uh, progress bar. Um, however, it already has a default thing of a centered circular progress indicator, so you don't need to do anything. Um, similarly, you can have a background dis uh, decoration, so uh, it's just black for me, so I didn't need to do anything, but if you wanted there to be something different when you zoomed really far out uh, behind it, then you could do that. Uh, hero attributes we used, what's another important one? Um, so you can control the min and max zoom along with the initial zoom. Now initial scale, the what I've used here, this is actually just dynamic, um, but it they give you with this uh, enum here, some various uh, things like the box fit that you can use. So these um, covered means that it's covering the entire thing, contained means that the entire photo will be within the viewport. So if you had contained with a rectangular image and it was a vertical view, well then it would be like a rectangle in the center. But if you use covered, what's gonna happen is it would spread that rectangle out such that it's zoomed in enough that it still covers the entire screen. Um, some other stuff is you can change the gesture, detect your behavior, um, some qu filter quality and an error builder similar to the loading builder. If there was an error loading the widget, um, such as no internet, then um, yeah, that's what it's gonna display there. It is also already something built in, which is just like the image icon with a line through it that people are pretty used to expecting. So you don't really need to pass that in, but you could. Okay, so that's the photo screen and that's the whole, whole tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed Instagram 2 here and can see the power of this uh, awesome plugin and how easy it is to make something that looks very, very good very quickly in Flutter.